Konnichiwa, everyone, and welcome. Now we're into the Thor 2-bit era, which is the PS1 and such. So, with that to note, we're going to start with the PS1. Now, it might be kind of hard to tell, but there are three rows that are lined up here. And we have a little bit more down here that's a little, just a tad bit off. So we got a lot of stuff, and the odds are we're going to probably make this two parts. Because the handheld episode ended up being really long. So what's up? Are you in air attack? Guardians Crusade. A very odd RPG. Uh, you basically use toys as summons. It's uh, supposed to be a beginner's RPG. Um, I only played a little of it. Um, I just never really got around to really play it. Uh, something I bought for like a doll or something in a bin. One Piece Mansion. It's uh, not really sure on the back. It kind of looks like some kind of weird puzzle game to me. I never played it at all. Time Crisis. Light gun shooting fun Set of Frontier two. Probably one of my least favorite in the saga series, along with Saga Unlimited. The art style was interesting, but I didn't like how they did the characters and stuff like most of the saga games became renowned for having multiple characters. Why? There were multiple characters in Saga Frontier 2, but a good handful of them feel like they're pointless and meaningless to the story. Because, like, in the first Saga F Frontier, like, each character had their own storyline, while Saga Frontier 2 tried to embed them all together, and thus made several characters not have integral role. The Misadventures of Tron Banya uh, It has a demo of Mega Man Legends 2, but no one really cares about that because we can get Mega Man Legends 2. Uh, this is the only uh, one of the Legends series I haven't beat if you count part of the Legends series, because it is part of its universe, obviously. Uh, I played some of it, but it didn't really get to playing a lot of it. Uh, the Grand Stream Saga, um, one thing stuck with me when I played this, everyone has no faces. Star Ocean, the second story. And the back of it has Azor's Dreams thing. Uh, that's, uh, for some reason, uh, whoever originally owned this, uh, lost the back of it. Uh, can I, I can't remember if I had, yeah, I did, I did have the booklet with it too. Which is probably a really good find for that, because it's, Uh, not sure how to pronounce it, Johnny's West, it's a tactics RPG with the Johnny West storyline. Um, played only a little, didn't really seem very interesting. Strider 2, which comes with Strider 1 as well. Very, very nice collection. Souls of the Samurai, it's a Samurai fighting game. Some reason uh, well, a lot of people were obsessed with getting fun, uh, realistic samurai fighting games back then. Uh, Galarians. Um, I tried to play a good bit of this, but it's it's a really like mean like it's a survival horror game in the vein of Resident Evil, and it's it's pretty ruthless with the item management. Like you really have to be trying hard. Uh, going to Battle Assault 2, fighting game. Ghost in the Shell. Uh, I have the booklet, but it doesn't have its front cover. Uh, I never played this one. I own it in the PS2 one. Um, I played a little of the PS2 one. I never really got around to playing the PS1 one yet. Uh, hold it. It's really good, though. Vagrant Story. Oh, I got really far in Vagrant Story, but it started getting pretty hard while I was. Probably because I fucked up how I was using my stuff in that. I'd say at the time when I was playing this, uh, since it used it several Westerish 
ideas in it. It was probably a little out of what I was used to. Faculty profile. Um, what's really sad is um, these. I bought these in um, the dumbass store. Like there were stickers on these, and they took them off and made the discs sticky. So if you put them in a PS2, they stick in there, and I'm always been afraid of it damaging them. Um, so I have to play it on a PS1, and I just I never really got to wound to it. And I thought about getting like the uh, PSP port of it, and just have that for collector's value. Um, not even sure how to answer that. Hashagimi, uh, I played a bit of it. Um, it's a tactics game, and apparently, um, the leveling up is horrible in this because, um, I didn't play it very long, but apparently, uh, you have to keep going to this kind of trial area place with the train. So, uh, uh, let's see, try to pronounce how. E handle, I believe? Is how you pronounce it? This is a fun game. I never be in it though. A really fun game. I think it's a really good game. Ape Escape. It was cheap in the bargain bin, but uh Grandia one, something I need to actually get back to. We have Grandia two and three being. I need to get Grandia one, it's Magic Dungeon spin off and Museum Bean. Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. Ah, uh, <clears throat> Ark the Lad Collection, which, if I remember correctly, uh, let's see, uh, it's Ark the Lad 1, 2, and Ark Wiener, and Ark the Lad 3. And I believe... Mine has everything with it. it has a special boxlet. It comes with uh, these little button things you can put over your analog sticks. There's four of them. Uh, I believe one of each of the main characters, yeah. And uh, also comes with a memory case. And then, like Luna 2, it has these little pop out things. Uh, I've never opened these ones. Uh, I did open my Lunar ones, because, uh, in, like, uh, the Lunar PS1 games, they also come with a very nice, colorful, hand done odd booklet. That also comes with a little string for uh, placement. Uh, I got near the end of Ark the Lad 1, and I debate about finishing it and just going to 2, but I came in a big debate over one of the, uh, I can't remember his name, the really big fat dude summon shit. Um, there's a secret summon in the first one you can get, and though you can get her in the sequel, it's harder because she levels up, because, and, uh, here is the actual case which still holds to be the the uh, most CDs I've seen in a single PS1 case five discs I've never seen so many in one thing more than this one I'll make sure they don't slide out yeah that's a lot of CDs in one of these. It's very nice. Uh, Shimon Tenzi, well, well, actually, uh, as far as I'm well, Shimon Tenzi thing ain't actually part of the titles in Japan. Persona 2 Instance. In. Um, this was before there was even an announcement for it being pulled on the PSP. And even before that, coming to America. Um, so now I own a Japanese version that I don't necessarily need because I got the PSP one now. Uh, this is a side thing, kind of like Sega Saturn Japanese games. Came with a card of Luc Lucifer. And uh, that's pretty much it. 
aside from the book and you know all that nice stuff there. Another Japanese I got is um Leguesia Le One and Two collection. Uh, if I know correctly, these were original Sega Saturn games. I think uh, comes with a bunch of little pins. Of course, you got the booklet. Uh, the little uh, side thing, and uh, you got the case. Yeah. And it also comes with an art booklet. It's not very big. Just has a few pictures. Show this off all real quick. You get the one. Let's see this cast two and it's a uh, tactic series. And uh that's all a very nice opportunity to get and uh, I got. And it's very nice, very nice box for it. I like I like this idea of making the kind of collector's box thing like the same shape as the case like uh, with uh, the Generation War game thing, uh, the sequel one. Uh, Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of the Superhero. Monsters Wool, Monster Rancher 2. Uh, never played 2. I played Monster Rancher 3. Uh, that was cheap. Uh, Gunfighter, the Legend of Jesse James. It's just a light gun, okay looking game. For Mission 3. Saga Frontier, one of my favorite saga games. Um. It was a really bizarre world and universe and everything. I, I really did enjoy this entry. I only finished about half of it with a few of the characters and still had some of the other ones I never got to fish. Castlevania Chronicles, a remake of Castlevania 1. The Struggle Within Clock Tower 2, which is actually a lie. It's a really Clock Tower 2. It's actually a spin off in Japan why the real Clock Tower 2 was Clock Tower 1 in America and the real Clock Tower 1 never came to America. Yeah, that's all confusing, yeah. Hello. Ugh. Okay, so we got through like one stack. Uh, let's get a few more. Uh, yeah, I never took this one apart to fix a case. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Good lord. This is the hardest video game card game I ever fucking played. Like, I got to the end, and it's really freaking like... You know, I usually find video game adaptations of card games really easy. This is hard. Like, this ain't holding your hand or anything. You can devote tons of time and shit, because basically, you know, like how in Yu Gi Oh! you can put in a code and, like, get, like, the blue eyes, white dragon and shit, like, right off the bat and shit. You can do that in this, but it costs points. Like, the Blue Eyes White Dragon, you need, I think, 9,999 points, if I remember correctly. And you have to spend forever farming that many points just to get one Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's ludicrous. So that means you gotta own everything fairly, and not that that's a particular problem in a normal game, but even in a normal yu gi I have a few other Yu-Gi-Oh games, and this is just really, like... It has a fusion system where you fuse cards. It's just, it's just really hard. I never was able to finish it because you have to finish a bunch of duels in a straight row with no loss. Vampire D. Uh, that's a photocopy of the cover. It came like that. 
Um, it's like Resident Evil with action elements. <laughs> Uh, very strange. I played it for a while and I just didn't really... Uh, Space Griffin F uh, VF9. Um, I never played this, uh, so I don't really know what kind of game it is, really. Beyond the Beyond. Um, if you're a Golden Sun fan, I would say check this out. Because this was by the people who did Golden Sun. And combat in that is very reminiscent looking of Golden Sun. Sadly, Beyond the Beyond is the toy is for being a very horrible story. And not horrible because, to what I understand, it's just very corny, you know, you can see everything coming, and it's a done that, it's been done, it's existed since the NES age, and all that. Uh, Ballerina Tadoshian 3, uh, I believe I only played the first one. Uh, going on, Um Jamal Limey, which is a uh, Papa the Wapo spinoff. Uh, a lot of people don't like this one, so... Digimon World 3. Oh, dear. This ain't bad. It's really freaking long, though. Like, I devote... I played a lot of this. A lot. And I still never finished it. Actually, I tried to pick it up a few years ago, and I couldn't even remember what the hell I was doing. Like, there was so, so much padding in this game. Uh, but I really should get back to it, because I did put a lot of time in it. Um, another game I need to finish is, uh, Torquin The Last Hope, or, um, Toloon. I like his Japanese name more. Tloon. Uh, the Magic Dungeon game, the second Magic Dungeon game of the Dragon Quest series. Um, it looks a little weird on the PS2. There's some kind of problem with, like, the images of their eye, like, one of their eyes are kind of pixelated when you're playing on the PS2. It's kind of weird. Not really sure why it does that. <laughs> but, um,. That's a good one. I'm near, I'm at the end of that. Um, I tried the final boss several times. It, it's really freaking hard. Uh, Dragon Value. Um, <laughs> and I'm not really sure what to say. Uh, I did play some of it. I didn't really like it, to be honest. Um, kind of like a side scroll beat 'em up action game. It's but it's not like. It's uh, just YouTube it. Digimon World 1. Um, a lot of people didn't like this. Uh, I actually did like it. Um, some of the Digimon World 3, I actually got to the end. But again, I didn't get to, like... I had a Wii, like, my Digimon was a virus po a Digimon, and I had to, like basically kill him off again, it'd have to redo him as a new Digimon and retrain him and the for some reason I just got tired of this. Didn't pick it up. I need to get back to that one too. Uh Digimon World two. Um I'd say it's the black sheep album. I mean the first one was an interesting idea. The third one's more of a traditional RPG Digimon World 2 is kind of a hybrid idea with magic dungeon elements. And it's it's interesting, but the presentation makes it feel boring to me, so... I couldn't really get too into it. I liked the, the concept of the gameplay, but like the motivation of the story and stuff did not really motivate me. And that's what's always a shame when there's an interesting idea. Was was be the the musical adventure, a notorious RPG by NIS. Uh, but uh, this was back when uh, they didn't have any milk present. Atlas would do this and uh, Disgaea for them, and they would soon uh, become popular. Though, uh, I don't think this entry was ever really popular in America. Um, I never played this one. Uh, never played it. Uh, a friend of mine borrowed it, and he said he beat it, like, the weekend he borrowed it. And, like, 
I I just like that is short. If he really did beat it, um, old old Rudnia two. I played a good bit of this. It's kind of like a three D Zelda adventureish game. Um, I got so far, but then I stopped and. Eh. Kind of a gamble game, in my opinion. Uh, Xeno Gears. The Toys is a very good RPG, obviously. Uh, mech wise. Um, I never really got into sci fi stuff a lot, if I haven't said a bazillion times. And even RPG sci fi doesn't always interest me. Uh, I played the little, I couldn't really get into it all the way. I mean, it was an interesting idea again, but. You know, sometimes you got the uh, false old one, yeah, which is uh, completely different looking. Uh, again, it looks like a Zelda game, but the other one's in full 3D. Why this one is in 2D? Or maybe it's more like Wa Yee's uh, Parasite Eve 2. I got near the end of that and um, never finished it. Something else I have to. Now, the other Persona 2, A Total Punishment. Um, I believe this also has its booklet, uh, yes? Which, uh, with, uh, Innocent Sin, basically completed the Persona series for me. Populous, The Beginnings, on the PS1. Um, I haven't played it, it was cheap. Uh, I've played some of the other populist games for Jade Cocoon, story of the Tatamu Tatamumi the uh, I can't say it right. Um, the Jade Cocoon series, very interesting series. Um, I'd say I like the story of the first one, but I like the gameplay of the second one. So if they like merged the two of those, I would have liked the the, the Italian thing more. Because this is more of a Pokemon whip-off. And though the sequel is also like that, but it has an interesting combat system. But we'll talk more on that when we get to that one, obviously. Um, that's a not a bad game, though. Wild Arms 2. Then Wild Arms One, and I, I think I was about halfway in Wild Arms One. Uh, oh yeah, no back thing on that one. I think I was halfway in Wild Arms One, and um, oh, I don't remember exactly what was. It's another thing I have to get back to. Uh, and another thing I need to get. Ogle Battle Mar uh, March of the Black Queen. This is a pretty hard thing to get on you. Get your hands on. Uh, excellent game. Very excellent. Um, I just, uh, I didn't get the way I'm finishing it. It's really a shame. Very fun game. You ever see it for a good price? Yeah. Um, let's try the cool. 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 I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, this is a part of, uh, what is it called? Um, Shadow something. Um, this is a prequel to that series because the female character appears in the other games. Um, I can't remember what it is offhand. I don't own any of them. Um, it's Shadow something, but, um,. Uh, this is a very interesting survi uh, take on mixing survival horror with RPGs like P Parasite Eve tried. Um, it's a very interesting idea, and uh, I was playing it for a while, but then uh, I got caught up in new releases and I haven't got back to it. <laughs> As you can see, I got a big stack of games that I have to really finish. Oh, so much stuff. Oh, let's see. We gotta start scooting some stuff over because we got piles of everything here. Actually, um, let's cut this so I can put some of this stuff away so I have more room in that. So, uh, see you in the next part.